Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics. I'm going to make a bit of a weird video today because I would like to talk about the loss of a dear friend that's been with me since the very start of this YouTube channel. This here tripod. Now, when you're testing giant scary battle bots, there is no way to be properly safe outside of when you're actually at battle bots and you have a giant test box that costs about $20,000 to build because of the price of polycarbonate and many other elements that go into it. So the only real way to be safe is to set up a camera on a tripod and get the hell away from it. And then you can do things like you see in the video behind me in one of the earlier videos on my YouTube channel, where we basically just slapped a camera on Bloodsport with the GoPro, slapped one on a tripod, this tripod, and we ran the hell away and then would spin it up and hit things. Now, Obviously, things can go wrong very quickly and very unexpectedly when you're testing a robot. That is why safety is so important and why being near them, or at least with line of sight with them, is so incredibly dangerous. One example of that happens in this video, where you can see uh, we had some wedgelets mounted on the front of the robot at one point. They hit a seam in the concrete and then bounced up into the path of the weapon getting launched away at about 200 miles an hour. Those forks weighed about five pounds each. If that had hit you in the head, you would die very fast. This is why we test things before we show up in the arena, but it's also why we make sure we are absolutely nowhere near them and there's no line of sight when we're testing. We get the radio connected, hide behind a hill somewhere, and then we drive the robot into whatever we're going to hit, and then we wait for the weapon to spin all the way down before getting anywhere close to it again afterwards. With smaller robots, however, there are much easier ways to test. You can, in fact, just build a test box, which I have a couple videos about, and I will link those below and put cards above. But you should definitely do this if you're looking at building a 150 gram, one pound, three pound robot and you want somewhere to safely test it. It's not very difficult, it's not very expensive. You can build a test box with materials you can find mostly at your local hardware store and buy some polycarbonate off Amazon or Freckle Face or Kerbal Plastics or any other local plastics company that you might be near, probably has some. You wanna make sure it's polycarbonate, not acrylic. They look similar, but polycarbonate is far more impact resistant. And it will protect you from shrapnel that might get launched if you're beetle weight robot hits something in the test box, or it'll also protect you if the entire weapon blade comes off unexpectedly, or your robot happens to explode randomly, which tends to happen from time to time with people's first robots. So, why am I saying that I'm losing this tripod? Well, as you can probably see, the legs are a little bit messed up. That is because of something that happens later in this video. right about here. We decided we would hit a printer. The printer itself was not the problem, but because the printer kept getting blown over by the wind, we decided to prop it up with some rocks. Now, at one point, we accidentally ran the printer again and then backed it up and hit a rock backwards, and this launched ink cartridges, ink, and rocks in the general direction of the hill that we were all hiding behind, and as you can see, it also pretty badly impacted one of the legs on this tripod. So unfortunately, I can no longer ex retract this leg all the way, uh, because it's bent, and this leg as well, because this one's also bent because it got hit by a rock. And I've been using this tripod since then, taking it to Norwalk events usually, to ha have it sitting by the arena. But unfortunately, I can no longer manage to extend this leg anymore. So I think that it is time that this tripod is retired. This is unfortunate because I got this one for free as a gift from my dad at around the time that I started this YouTube channel. It doesn't have a whole lot of sentimental value for me, but still kind of sad that it has to go to waste because it accidentally got hit by a 250 pound battle bot. But such is life, I suppose. This is all to say that it's important to take the appropriate safety measures when you're doing anything for combat robotics, whether it is using tools in a workshop 
or testing your robot, always make sure to wear eye protection if you need it, hearing protection. If you are using a tool that requires the use of gloves, make sure to wear gloves. If you're using a tool that should not require the use of gloves, like a table saw or a lathe, where it can be easy to catch your hand and have it sucked into the tool, if you're wearing gloves, make sure not to wear gloves in those situations. A drill press and a mill are in other great examples where you don't want to be wearing something like a thick leather glove or something like that. You could potentially wear uh, flimsy rubber gloves that'll just tear easily, but nothing that'll allow your fingers to get pulled into a spinning tool that is extremely dangerous. Um, if you're sanding, that's also usually recommended not to wear gloves because you can have your glove get caught in the sanding belt or disc as well. Just make sure to always follow appropriate safety precautions when you are building your robot and testing your robot so that you don't end up dead. And instead, all you have to deal with is a cheap $40 tripod getting damaged because that's a lot cheaper than your healthcare bills would be. Before I go, I'd like to thank the sponsor of today's video, PCBWay. PCBWay is helping Bloodsport get ready for BattleBots Proving Grounds. We ordered some fancy machine parts from them. This is the first time that I've ever used a CMC milled 3-axis titanium part on any of my robots, and I'm really excited to take a look at these. These are going to be magnet holders that mount to the underside of Bloodsport because we are upgrading Bloodsport to a brushless drive system so we can get more drive power, but that extra drive power is useless if the wheels are just spinning in place. So we need a way to basically increase the coefficient of friction between the wheels and the floor. The easiest way to do that, aside from changing wheel compounds, which you can only go so far if you're already at like a 0.8 or 0.9 coefficient of friction, is to simply add down force, which effectively increases the effective weight or the normal force against the ground with the robot. So that's where these come in. These are milled out of a single block of grade five titanium, and they will bolt to the robot with four bolts, M5 bolts, and they will house a very strong neodymium magnet in here, so we will basically fill this with some sort of epoxy or potting compound, slap the magnet in there, bolt it to the bottom of the robot. These edges will make it so that if it hits some sort of seam in the floor or another robot's fork or something, all of that force doesn't instantly tear it off. It'll just kind of, you know, bounce over it, hopefully. And uh, these parts have a two millimeter thick wall. So this is not like a super simple and easy part, but PCBWay did a fantastic job milling this out. I did my best to uh, basically design this so that it would be easy to machine on a 3-axis mill, and it looks like that worked out quite nicely because the parts came out amazing looking. Titanium is a very hard metal to mill. It's at least three times harder than aluminum, and almost as hard as hardened steel. So it is not easy to make a part that looks this good out of a material that difficult to work with. So a huge thank you to PCBWay. Make sure to check them out in the link in the description for $5 off your first order for all of your CNC machining needs or PCB prototyping, of course, and PCB assembly. And they also even offer industrial 3D printing. So check them out at the link below. Thanks for watching, and I'd love to thank my Patreon supporters especially Shay Schooley and Martin also Brooks, who are subscribed at the $15 tier. If you would like to support me, check out the Patreon at the link below. Make sure to click like on this video if you enjoyed it. And if you want to see more videos like this, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you get notified when they come out.